Well, there was something to learn here. <laughs> Couldn't quite put my finger on it, but I knew it was somewhat important. Maybe not. That was the end of my morning salutation on the roof of the Pittman Apartments, 22 G Long Street, sometimes known as CIA Station Saigon, if only for the next few hours. Tuesday, April 29, 1975. I was a brand new second lieutenant in the Marine Corps. Now, I didn't start out to be this. I was a graduate from Hofstra with a BA in philosophy, you know, for the bold career move. But then I decided I'd put my grad school plans where they were, as plans. I needed to get out, I needed to do something. I needed to go someplace, be a part of something bigger than myself. I wanted a story to tell. And the Chinese have a very good saying for this, careful what you wish for. Yeah. And that was my touchstone as I tried to figure out how in the world had they sent me to this place. The war was over, had been for quite some time. We were in pull down mode. And nobody was coming over here. They were all being sent home, except me. I was gonna to talk to my superior officer. And now as a Marine, you don't cry, you don't whine, you don't complain, you just do. So we were gonna do a conversation. He looked at me and he said, Lieutenant, the Corps does not make mistakes. Buck up. All right. With that in mind, I found myself in the center, the epicenter of madness, with a strong undercurrent of panic, and was covered over very thinly with this outbreak of sporadic gunfire from time to time, and then ever so often an artillery round would come whistling in over our heads. But other than that, hey, it was hot, humid, and it smelled. My official title was liaison officer, which tells you everything and then absolutely nothing about what I did. Company policy. I was never in uniform because, son, Charlie's out there with scopes, good ones. And an officer, an American officer, is a high value target. Yeah, that starts your day, right? <laughs> so somewhere around 1,100 hours on this um, Tuesday, we got our signal over AFN. You know, the go signal, White Christmas. It was supposed to be Bing Crosby. It turned out to be Tennessee Ernie Ford. <laughs> didn't really matter. Didn't change the message, which was, get the fuck out of Dodge now. And so we were evacuating on something of a major scale here. Key points throughout the city. Civilians mostly, a mix of ours and theirs. Ours because, well, they're ours. And the locals who had befriended us had signed their own death warrant. These were the stakes of the game. Here was our plan. Bring the people up to the roof. Easy peasy. Pittman only had five floors. Up there, we would run into the air stairs. You know, like the ones they use at the airport? In fact, these were the ones they used at the airport. Only they weren't using them. We had a need. We left a note. The first set would send you up over the, the roof of the penthouse. Trust me, it was just a big, ugly room. The next set of stairs took you up to the top of the elevator housing, a structure roughly the size of a shed, on top of which, provided we had done the proper homework, would be an Air America helicopter to whisk you away to safety. We had 20 in service this day, and we would need them all. And things were going along swell, swimmingly, as much as could be, concerning what this was, desperate people fleeing for their lives. And then it hit me. This is going a little too well. We don't have any major snafus. We're used to the dark side, the stuff that blew up in our face, literally and figuratively. Well, it didn't happen. We were, however, not skating. There was the thick ball of smoke from the pre-dawn raid that, you know, are going away present. Then there were the thunderstorms that rolled in in the afternoon, further dampening the visibility and the coup de grace. They overran the fuel depots, both of them. Not hard to do, they were right next to each other. Left with only what fuel we had on board. 
we knew that these flights would stop eventually. It was a long and grueling day, somewhere around 2200. The last chopper to leave our station touched down on the deck of the Midway, one of the carriers in the fleet of the Seventh Fleet out there in the South China Sea. I remember deplaning and then standing there on deck drinking in the fresh, sweet sea air. And I thought back over all we had done. And you know, it wasn't so bad. It wasn't great. That was a bar set too high for us. But on this day, in this place, it was enough. We saved over a thousand lives, our station alone. And that made me proud, made me happy. And it felt good because out of all the crap and all of the shit and the stuff that had gone on here, we had done something decent. And I could tell about this and that's when I saw it. The two dozen or so guys pushing our bird out of the way. Not just out of the way, but way out of the way. As into the edge of the deck, over it, and into the ocean. The official line was, well, there's just no room. Yeah, but come on, guy, this was... Was this the lesson I was supposed to learn? Not to hold on to things, like helicopters? They are kind of heavy, take a lot of gas, maintenance alone. Seemed like a long way to go to make that point. But you know, I would figure it out. If not today, tomorrow, next week. The point is, Vietnam was behind me. I had survived. I was lucky. And I had this opportunity to figure it out. And I had my story to tell, which you just heard. Thank you. Thank you.